In this lecture, we're going to go over how to create a character animation using the Puppet Warp tool, which is also sort of a resemblance of using the Mesh Warp as well as Bones in an animation. This is going to help you understand and set you up to create animations in Spine. So I have a character right here, and I'll leave the PNG for this character after this lecture for you to download so you can also do this project. So if you're interested in learning how to actually create this character, I'm going to leave a link for the video on my YouTube channel that teaches you how to actually create this character step by step. So the first thing we want to do to create this animation is first we're going to create a timeline animation and we want it to be a frame animation. Then we'll go ahead and create that. And for now we'll just leave that as is. Next, we want to go ahead and create each one of our frames. So we're going to make this a very, very short animation, but it'll be very simple, but still look pretty good. So what we want to do is first, we're going to start the character out in this pose. So this will be our first frame. Then we're going to go ahead and hit Control J or Command J if you're on a Mac to make a copy of this layer. And now we'll go ahead and animate this second frame layer. So I'm going to come up to my edit and then come down to Puppet Warp. And then we can go ahead and start animating this character. So I'm going to start by adding in my pins. So I'm going to add a pin to each ear so we can animate our ears. I'm also going to go ahead and add in a pin to the bottom of his head and a pin to his back, his butt, and the top of each leg. Then I'm going to add a pin to the bottom of each leg like so. And now we can go ahead and begin animating. Now, if you don't want to see your grid any longer so you can actually see your image, what you can do is you can come up to here where it says show mesh and uncheck that. So now all you can see are the actual pins. This makes it much easier for animating. So what we want to do in our animation is we want to go ahead and animate our character's ears first off. So what we'll do is we'll grab this one right here and we're going to animate it to about there. Then we'll go ahead and grab this one and animate it to about there. And we can even animate the head a little bit by dragging this over to there and this over to there. Then we're going to go ahead and animate our legs. So we want our legs to squash up a little bit. And what this is going to do is it's going to give the illusion that our character is crouching down. Now at the moment, since we're pulling it up, it's actually going to look like our character is raising off the ground. But if we go ahead and hit enter to solidify this puppet warp, then what we can do is we can go ahead and use our arrow keys and using our grab and move tool, we'll go ahead and nudge that down by pressing the arrow keys on our keyboard until it lines back up with the bottom where it originally was. And that's going to keep it on that same ground level and it's going to bring his head down so it's going to actually make it look like he's crouching. Next, let's go ahead and make a copy of our original layer. So this one right here, we'll copy that. Then we're going to drag it to the top like so. So now it's going to go from our original pose to this crouching one back to our original and then we're going to stretch them out a little bit so we're going to go ahead and make a copy of this layer then we're going to go ahead and turn on our puppet warp tool so we'll come down to puppet warp then we'll go ahead and add in our pins so two to each ear one to this side of the head one there and one at the bottom then we'll add one to the back one to the butt and one to the top of each leg then we'll one to the feet and then we can go ahead and animate. So in this one, what we want to do is we want to go ahead and animate the ears over to this side. Same with this one. So we'll move that to about there and we'll animate the head more over to this side, like so. Then let's go ahead and animate the feet. So I'm going to grab each foot and actually stretch it out this time instead of pulling it up. So I'll stretch it out to about there. Then I'll go ahead and hit enter. And this time, rather than nudging it down with our arrow keys, we want to actually nudge it up so it lines back up on that same level. So about there should be good. So now we have all the frames for our animation. Let's go ahead and set this up in our timeline and see how it plays. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off all of my layers except for my first frame one layer. Then I'm going to go ahead and add in four frames. Then starting on my frame two, I'm going to go ahead and turn off that frame one and turn on my frame two layer. Then I'll move to frame three and turn off my frame one layer and turn on my frame three layer. Then I'll move to frame four and I'll turn off my frame one layer and turn on my frame four layer. 
So now if we go ahead and click through these and see how this plays, you'll see it adds a nice little cool animation to it. Let's go ahead and set this up so it plays forever instead of once. That way it loops back over and over again. And then we're going to change the timing on this from 0 seconds to 0.01 seconds or 0.1 seconds, sorry. Then we'll go ahead and play that and see how it looks. So now we have a cool little animation. Now you could take much, much more time to make sure this played out smoothly, but for now this will work perfect. I just want to get you understanding the idea of how using mesh warp and also how adding points and sort of like bones to your character and then moving those and creating frames creates an animation. That brings us to the end of this lecture. So in this lecture, you learned how to actually animate a character using your frame animation tool and your puppet warp tool. Thanks for watching this lecture, and I really look forward to seeing you in the next one.